Welcome to Lesson 1, Collective Rights in Canada, adapted from Social Studies 9, Learn Everywhere software created for Social Studies 9 in Alberta. First Nations and Inuit were the original peoples living in North America long before Canada was discovered by Europeans, and they have always had and continue to have distinct cultures, societies, and languages among them. Before colonization, their territories encompassed most of Canada. Here's what that looked like before colonialization. Now, a review of Grade 7 Social Studies reminds us that colonialization began when explorers were sent to discover and settle territory for countries such as France, England, and Spain. Jacques Cartier and Jean Cabot were the first to lay claim to land in North America following the First Nations. The Francophone population in Canada began with the early exploration of North America in the late 1500s and early 1600s, and the establishments of the first French settlements in Acadia and along the St. Lawrence River in Quebec. Today, Canada's Francophone population lives throughout Canada. Here's a census taken in 1991 that shows the population in different regions of Canada and the percentage of that population that happens to be French-speaking. Now, Anglophone contact began with Jean Cabot's discovery of Newfoundland in 1497. Early English settlements began to develop in Newfoundland and, and along the southeastern coast of present-day United States. It's helpful to understand the history of these three significant founding groups of people because they contributed to the country that Canada is today. So how does Canada recognize the contributions of these founding peoples today, and why would this recognition even be important? The founding groups of people are identified in the Constitution, and the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms recognizes both French and English as the official languages of Canada. These documents entrench the collective rights of both French and English languages. The collective rights are based on historical and contemporary agreements between the founding groups and the crown of the day, or Canada. Collective rights in Canada are specific legal rights present in the Constitution and Charter for official language groups, official language minorities, and Aboriginal peoples. However, it's important to consider the following question. To what extent has Canada affirmed the collective rights of Francophones, Anglophones, and Aboriginal people? I want you to watch this next video. Now that's just the beginning of the video, you can watch the rest of the video on your own, but we've created a World Heritage Site in honor of this place geographically, and this is the website dedicated to it. You may want to spend some time poking around the history and the archaeology here, because I want you to consider the following important question. In terms of affirming collective rights, what is the significance of this site to First Nations people in Alberta? How does it affirm the collective identity of First Nations people? After all, the purpose of collective rights is to affirm the collective identity of groups in society and to create a society where people of different identities belong. There are many collectives in Canada. However, only three collectives have rights entrenched in the Canadian Constitution and Charters of Rights and Freedoms. So, individual rights are granted to all Canadians in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And collective rights are rights belonging to Canadians that belong to a certain group. These rights are given to groups based on historical legislation and they're recognized and protected by Canada's Constitution. Collective rights ensure equality and non-discrimination and recognize values and diversity of the distinct identities, cultures, and social organizations of Aboriginals, Francophones, and Anglophones. Now consider the position of the government. How would the government respond to the following question? Should all collectives have rights? Use what you've learned so far in this lesson, as well as the frequently asked questions on collective rights on page 122 of your textbook to help you formulate your response. In your answer, be sure to consider how identity, citizenship, and quality of life of all Canadians are influenced by collective rights. Now get to it.